Devil Hunters Chainsaw Man 148 titled Room 606 Sword gave Asa and Yoru the boost and strength we've been waiting for. Denji and Fumiko make an escape. And how did Yoshida versus Asa turn out? Let's go ahead and talk about that weird deranged man pointing his finger at Quan Chi, Denji, and Fumiko, trying to figure out whether or not Denji is one of those fake chainsaw men that can transform into, well, the chainsaw devil. Now, to his credit, he does make a good point when he says all of these children are transforming into pseudo chainsaw men. But pointing at Denji, Naita, and even Fumiko to some extent does make a little bit of sense. But Fumiko quickly retorts by saying, hey, we're public safety devil hunters. To which the baldy public safety devil hunter says, look, man, it's just protocol. I'm following what I'm trying to do. But this is the part that gets me upset because Quan Chi clearly stands in the way. And Quan Chi has been a woman with very few little words. And we'll discuss that in a minute. But she just tells Fumiko and Denji to run, which incites Baldi to go ahead and shoot. To which Quan Chi ends up blocking with her arm, telling Fumiko Denji, Denji Naita to run again once more. Here's the thing. I don't understand why Aldi would go ahead and shoot when there's literally a weapons right in front of him. Like public safety should know of the operation defeating the Chainsaw Man church that went down a few weeks ago where they successfully captured Barum and the other hybrids and Quan Chi was the front runner. So why would Baldi Devil Hunter one not even know what Deji looks like which I find hard to believe but more importantly why is he standing in the way of Quan Chi who was leading the operation on behalf of them in the first place. Now, speaking of Quan Chi, I do appreciate her protecting Fumiko and Naita and Denji. And I will say just a minor gripe I have is that Quan Chi is a woman with few little words, but towards the end of the International Assassin's arc in part one, she was talking to Denji pretty regularly, even reinforcing that conversation she had with uh, Kishibe about ignorance is bliss. She's not really conversing with Denji here, right? Like I understand if she's not going to talk to Fumiko as much, but do you think there would be some type of conversation with with the reborn again control devil or just that conversation and rapport that she built with Denji up in part one. But let me know what you think. Now, I will say that transition to when Quan Chi got shot to her having a limp arm into the blood drip that now transitions into Asa's arm. And this is the second part of the review where a lot of people are going to go crazy because you got to keep in mind when Yoshida broke into Asa's apartment, the plan was to turn room 606 into a sword and then face off against Yoshida that way. And well, Yoshida definitely had an advantage Advantage and even apologized to Asa a few weeks back. So he successfully takes off one of her arms. But then what we discover in chapter 148, when he aims for her head, or at least the second arm anyway, Asa ends up blocking it. And Yoshida looks like he had remorse. But on a second read, it was clearly evident that Fujimoto wanted to show us Asa and Yoru got the biggest power buff from the chaos and destruction that was happening when Baron relayed the information that the Canadian and Chinese churches held all those weddings for people to become the pseudo chainsaw man and the fire devil became strong and i think because that just broke out into an all-out war that was just enough to give asa nyoru a huge power amp where yoshida is struggling to take down asa nyoru because she is now that strong which when you put into perspective yoru had such a great character introduction defeating the justice devil to quickly realizing she can't even take a reborn again bat devil running away from that to now here she is yeah she she got a little cut from Yoshida's blade, but Yoshida is one of the strongest characters within the entire verse of Chainsaw Man. We know he went toe to toe with Quan Chi, who's arguably the strongest weapons. Yoshida sends the octopus devil to just suffocate and, and maybe blow up Yoru and Asa in some brutal fatality. And it's revealed that they turned room 606 into a weapon without even touching it. As a result, confirming that her power is in fact increasing. Now this leads to many implications that we're gonna discuss in a minute, but now now that we see Yoru face off against Yoshida, there's a moment where the two square off and then there's an explosion that sets off behind Yoshida. And I thought initially that was a bomb, but to me, and I'm still not certain, so let me know in the comments down below. It looked like maybe Yoru was just attempting to slice Yoshida and the force of the sword slash was so strong that it blew up a portion of the building where Yoshida was near. Because you see Yoru fall to the ground saying this might take some adjustments. But in that moment, Yoshida ended up fleeing. So wow, not only did Yoshida realized in that moment, okay, I cannot take Yoru and Asa down any further. He ran away with Yoru laughing that the world is finally remembered the concept of war and the fear of war will now increase, strengthening Yoru and Asa even further. Now going back into Yoru turning anything into a weapon without touching it, does that mean she can turn Denji into a sword? Yes, but no. I still think because that's been heavily foreshadowed that yes, Denji will willingly maybe turn into a 
weapon for the sake of Asa once they realize that Asa and Yoru are kind of one in the same to defeat the Death Devil. But that aside, I wonder now if there was any implication that let's pretend that Yoshida didn't run away and Yoru ends up saying Octopus Weapon. Would that result in the Octopus Devil now becoming a weapon for Yoru and Asa? And maybe even the better conversation we need to be discussing is whether or not now she can go to any of the weapons devil because their names are the weapons and we know that they are some of the most powerful hybrids within all of Chainsaw Man but now I wonder if she can even go to Barum, Wan Chi and say crossbow weapon and as a result now Yoru just possesses that weapon just like that. That would be pretty frightening and now you can see why Fami was saying with the help of Chainsaw Man and my sister this is the only way Chainsaw Man and the War Devil combining their strength could potentially be enough to take down the Death Devil because it seems like the limitations for war to keep on increasing her strength as this story goes on seems almost limitless. Now we see Yoru looking into the streets of buildings being on fire and whatnot and I'm curious to know how far Quan Chi was to where Yoshida and Asa is right now because I wonder if Quan Chi protecting Fumiko and Denji and there was blood dripping could also even be a hint that in the upcoming chapter we might see Yoru versus Quan Chi because once again power scaling wise Yoshida can keep up with Quan Chi being a capable fighter that he is couldn't take out Asa's second arm ended up running away easily outmatched he was and I feel like someone who wouldn't run away would be the strongest weapons Quan Chi and now to really see Quan Chi versus this amped up Yoru go head to head I wonder how it's going to turn out I feel like it's going to be a brutal battle we're going to discuss more of this in the live discussion now if you want to be reminded into seeing how weak Yoru was into the woman that she's now become you're also going to want to click on this video right here.